Okay, maybe this one will record. Okay, so anyway, with the personality disorders, these people are difficult to deal with. They're not um, the easiest patients to take care of. They have different type of clusters of personality disorders they talk about. There's cluster A. These are the paranoid type disorders. Schizophren or schizotypical, um, schizoid, and paranoid personality disorders are all included in that. Um, with the paranoid personality disorder, these patients are suspicious, they are afraid of other people, they think that someone's trying to harm or exploit them or deceive them, they don't want to confide in others, um, they're afraid that any information that they do give might be used against them, so they're very paranoid. Um, they misread compliments as being manipulated, they're prone to counterattack, so they can be hostile and aloof. Psychotic episodes may occur in times of stress. To counteract patient fears, the nurses should um, give straightforward explanations of tests, history taking, procedures, side effects. You want to be upfront and 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 straightforward with these patients. The schizoid personality disorder. These people avoid close relationships. They're kind of socially isolated. They don't function well in like the work environment. They they appear to be cold and detached. They don't really have social awareness. The uh, relationships generate fear and confusion, so they really just kind of stay to themselves. With these patients, the nurse needs to strive for simplification and clarity to help decrease that patient's anxiety. With the schizotypal personality, um, these people have like magical thinking or odd beliefs. Their perceptions are distorted. They're kind of vague. They have stereotyped speech. They're also frightened and suspicious, and they can have that blunted affect. Um, they're also distant. They don't have really good social relationships. They tend to be frightened and suspicious. And simple explanations can help ease their anxiety and fears with these patients. Cluster B personality disorders. These are antisocial personality disorder, the borderline personality disorder, and... Um, histrionic and narcissistic personality disorder. So with antisocial, um, this these people have superficial charm, so they might be pretty charming like to talk to. They constantly violate the rights of other people. They're common it's common for them to be abusers, um, especially their spouses. Um, and it's always someone else's fault. I wouldn't have done this if you wouldn't have done this. Um they exploit others, they lie, they cheat, they don't have any remorse about it, they're impulsive, they lack empathy. These individuals are extremely extremely manipulative and aggressive, and so we as nurses must establish and adhere to a plan of care to maintain clear boundaries. So we have to set boundaries and stick to them, because they do. They try to do that patient, the staff splitting where, you're my favorite, they're terrible, and, and they're real manipulative. A lot of times they're very smart. A borderline personality. These people are unstable. They're really intense in their relationships. So there's no, it's all or none. There, there's not like, oh, I kind of like him. Oh, I mean, they're like intense. Um, they have disturbances and they're impulsive. They may self mutilate. They have like rapid mood shifts, chronic emptiness, intense fear. They're afraid that they're going to be abandoned. Again, they do that splitting. Um, that's one of their major defense mechanisms is splitting. That self-mutilation and suicide-prone behavior are frequently seen in these borderline personality disorders. Their anger is intense and it's pervasive and help with anger management is important for us as nurses to participate in. Also, uh, trying to build healthy relationships. We want safety and limit setting. We've got to set limits with them. Histrionic personality disorder. These people are, they want to be the center of attention all the time. They're flamboyant. They're seductive. They're provocative. Um, they need to be that center of attention. They're shallow. Their moods also rapidly switch. Thank you. Um, they're overly concerned with impressing others. They have exaggerated degrees of intimacy with others. Um, 
they're preoccupied with their own appearance. When they're not admired by others or they don't feel like they are, they get depressed. And suicide gestures may result in the patient's entry into the healthcare system. Um, we have to, of course, take that seriously and do a thorough assessment of suicide potential and support and off offer them support in the form of clear parameters and then they're going to have to use some have some sort of psychotherapy there's not a pill that you're going to be able to give to fix borderline or personality disorders in general are hard to treat with medication narcissistic personality disorder these people are grandiose they have fantasies of power or brilliance they need to be admired they feel entitled, they're arrogant, they're patronizing. These are people, we all know someone like this. They're rude. Um, they overestimate their self and underestimate others. Um, often it's because they have a fragile ego and they're overcompensating. Um, in a healthcare setting, these patients demand the best of everything. So they want the best toilet paper, they want the best sheet, they want the best blanket, they want the best food. They want your undivided attention. They're very demanding. When the patient's corrected um, and boundaries are defined or when limits are set on that patient's behavior, the patient feels humiliated and degraded and empty. So to lower anxiety, the patient, patient may launch a counterattack. Um, the nurse should gently help the patient identify the sense of entitlement and attempt to seek their attempts to seek and become perfect in grandiose behaviors. So we need to kind of point those out gently to them. Cluster C personality disorders. Um, these are the avoidant personality disorder, dependent, obsessive, compulsive. Um, with avoidant, they, they have social inhibitions. They don't feel adequate. They're hypersensitive to criticism. They're, they're fearful of rejection and criticism. Um, they're self-perceived to be socially inept, so they don't think they do well in social situations. They usually have a low self-esteem. Um, if, if they're working, demands of the workplace is, are often overwhelming. Um, project that caregivers will harm them through disapproval and perceive rejection where, where none exists. Um, so they, they always feel like someone's like going to be mad or going to judge what they did or think what they did was wrong. And so it's hard for them to kind of get through that. Um, the nurse needs to teach socialization skills and provide positive feedback and, and use uh, ways, encourage ways to build self-esteem. Dependent personality disorder. These people can't make decisions on their own. They have a hard time making decisions. They depend on someone else to do that for them. Um, they're anxious and helpless when they don't have someone around them. And they're submissive. Um, solicit caretaking by clinging. They fear abandonment if they're too competent and they experience anxiety and may have like coexisting depression. But the big thing about this group is they're, they're just, they're dependent on other people. They, they can't do things alone. Obsessive compulsive disorder. These people are uh, kind of obsessed and preoccupied with rules. They're perfectionists. Everything needs to be in order. They're too busy to have friends a lot of times. Um, they need rigid. They want. They have rigid control. That's what when they feel comfortable. And superficial relationships. They claim. Uh, they complain about others' inefficiencies and give others directions. We all know somebody who's a little bit OCD. I kind of am in some ways, but not to the point where I can't have relationships. But um, these are the people, like the show Monk, I don't know if you guys have ever seen that, but he was certainly OCD and he didn't have very many interpersonal relationships and dirt and things out of order freaked him out and he had a severe case of it. Um, personality, personality disorders are predisposing factors for other psychiatric disorders, so it's really common for someone with a personality disorder to also have depression or panic disorders or post-traumatic stress disorder or substance abuse or eating disorders or something else along that line. Um, genetics are thought to influence the development of personality disorders, but there's not been an individual gene that's that they've pinpointed and said, okay, this is the one, but they do believe that there is a genetic component. Um, 
they think that in reality, things that cause you to develop a personality disorder are a number of things like interactions of your genetics, neurobiology, and then your neurochemistry. So it can be lots of things that, or it usually is lots of things that go into that. Um, for the patient history, uh, we seek information about the medical history. Have they ever been suicidal or homicidal? Are they using medications at this time? Are they abusing substances? That type of thing. Again, it is often uh, beneficial to speak to a family member or someone that's close to them because they can sometimes give you information that the patient won't give. Um, when we're dealing with patients who have personality disorders, we want the patient to acknowledge like manipulative behaviors when they occur. So when the patient blames or attacks others or um, they try to manipulate someone else, we need to point that out and then have them like recognize that that's what that is. If, if it's a personality disorder and they've been doing that for so long, it becomes part of them and they don't even realize it necessarily. So that's one of the first steps that we can do to kind of point those out and help. Oh, uh, Most, like, most importantly with most of these personality disorders is the fact that we need to have, we need to have um, consistent boundaries and limits, especially if it's a manipulative patient, and that we need to set those limits and follow them, not just, I mean, and you see it, the clinical side, like how sometimes that's difficult because, especially when you have so many different people working with them, their personalities come into it, and those manipulative patients like that figure out who they can manipulate and who it's not really so much up for manipulation. So it's important that everybody kind of be on the same page when it comes to those interventions. Okay, any questions? No?